Hello and welcome and thank you very much for joining me in the studio again today where it's a bit nippy here, a bit cold. So I have wrapped up myself nice and warm. I've got a canvas, actually a canvas panel today. This is a artist's um, canvas board by Windsor and Newton. There you go, Windsor and Newton. It is a 16 by 12 or 406 by 305 millimeter canvas board. And I thought we'd just do something different today. So I thought I'm feeling in a warm mood. So let's have a look at the palette and see what colors we've got on the palette there today. It's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a great time. And don't forget to click subscribe. It is definitely cold today. So I've got a little bit of dioxazine purple. There you go, dioxazine purple. Or you can mix purple by using a little bit of red and blue. So any purple will do. I just thought I'd use that up today. I got a couple of different blues that I've played around with. Um, I've got um, an ultramarine blue uh, uh, on the on the warm side, on the red side. And I've added just a little bit of uh, white to that. So I've made that up and I've thickened the paint a little bit with some of my thickening agent, which you can find on my website. Again, um, with the two greens, this is a hooker's green and I've added white to that, just thickened it up just a touch. I've got some burnt umber, some titanium white, some Mars black. I've got some medium mix in my little um, container there because it's all of you, the fluid I actually use. And I will be using a fine mist bottle and all these products can be found at www.cly5art.co.uk. So, what I thought we'd do today, um, let's just get a brush. Um, I'm just, I'm going to get, I'm going to get, I'm going to get a, a short flat. There we go. Uh, I don't know what size this is. Um, it just doesn't really matter. Who's, who's to say what brush you pick up and what brush you don't pick up? So, I'm going to get a little bit of this ultramarine blue and white that I mixed. There we go. I'm just going to put a little bit of sky colour in. Again, crissy cross motions, crisscross motions, like that. A little bit darker up top. And um, today I just want to relax and paint. And um, I'm painting on a slightly bigger canvas today than I would normally do. And um, I, th I just thought it would just be fun today just to, just to, um, just want to add a bit more blue in there, just to, um, just relax really. Um, it's been quite a stressful week today, this week. Today, it's been quite a stressful day today as well. <laughs> it's been quite a stressful week for me this week, so I thought I'd bring you into the um, into the studio and we'll, we'll just see if we can create something on the on the warm side. On the warm side. There we are. Let's just get a little bit of that darker blue. Just a little bit of that darker ultramarine blue then. Just in the top there, like that. I'm just creating the sky, like I normally create the sky. There you go. And just, just enjoy the painting process, and that's what it's all about. Just enjoying the painting process. So I'm going to, a lot of this sky is going to be um, painted over, because I've got, I got trees and things to, to think about today. So I'm just going to, just, just make a sky up, um, and you make a sky up as you want to. I'm just gonna just gonna make the sky up like that. I don't think I'll put any clouds in it today. I think I'll just put some wispy white streaks just in the sky like that. Just make it look as if there maybe there's just just a little bit of um, moisture in the air. Maybe the clouds haven't formed yet, and we haven't got any baby clouds yet. So there we go. Just a little bit of. A little bit of warmth. We might add a little bit more of that later on. So I'm going to get some um, on my dioxazine purple. This is a lovely purple, by the way. You can see how how nice that is. What a wonderful looking, what a wonderful looking colour that is. I'm going to take that right right down, right down. I'm just adding some more more white to it as I as I do that. I just wanted to show you the lovely colour that dioxazine purple can actually give you. It's a wonderful, wonderful colour. And all I'm going to do is just squidge some shapes in like this. 
Just make some shapes up. Just let, just let the brush do what it needs to do. And it'll eventually it will eventually just become what it is. And that's all you need to do sometimes. You don't need to we don't need to overwork stuff sometimes. We just need to just let let the brush do the job. Let the brush do the job. There you go. Just let that brush do what it needs to do. And again, as I said, I'm not too worried about I'm not too worried about the um, the background yet. Tippy tippy tippy, tappy tappy tappy, tippy tippy tippy, squishy squishy squishy. Then a bit of that background. Now I've gessoed the canvas with um, a gesso. If you're going to need gesso, don't worry. Um, it's always recommended to put some gesso on the canvas. It just helps the paint flow, especially with acrylics. You can use gesso with oil paints as well, because you can paint oils on water, on um, acrylics, but you can't paint acrylics over oils. That's something we need to remember. There we are. We just put a few, maybe distant type of tree shapes in there like that. So what I'm going to do now is just get a little bit of this green. I am washing my brush because I want that purple colour to come back in. Let's get a little bit of purple into that green. There we are. Let's get a little bit of purple into that green. A little tiny smoked white. There we are. Just for that. Just scagging the brush around like that. Maybe even. Let's put a few. Green shapes here and there, like that. Get a little bit of white, just a little bit of white into that colour. Put a few little white shapes in. <laughs> Let's get a bit of this dark colour now and just bring that in front of that and just let the painting process just happen. I need to wash my brush now. I tend to be a bit of a dirty painter but it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. When we find that our, our paint is starting to get a little bit maybe contaminated then we need to think about changing our brush. A lot of people um, wash their brushes every single colour change, colour colour change, but it all depends what colours you're using and with the experience you have sometimes that you can you can say oh, I can mix our colour together and that's going to look nice, it's just going to add some, some textures and forms and stuff to it and, and that's what we do sometimes. As us dirty painters, we tend to tend to do that. This is just the first layer. I'm getting a little bit of green, I'm trying to make some sort of a shape there. Maybe we'll put a bank in there and maybe there could be a tree or something living in there as well. So I just put a little bit of burn dumber into that grass area like that. So it's just a block out stage so don't worry too much about being accurate and, and stuff. I'm just going to chain check my, my voice record is working, which it is, because I've been playing around with a few settings in the studio. There you go. So what we want to do now is just get a little bit of that blue into that green. I want to bring a little bit of shadow in there.
in a bit of shine or a bit more blue. bits here and there, just like that. Don't want to do too much. I don't want to do too much. There you go. So just building a, a little bit of a a little bit of a background. As we come along, I'm just picking up a little bit of this hook is green and I'm just trying to get a little bit of foliage in. Or what what could be foliage. I'm trying not to paint, I'm trying not to, to do too much detail work. I want I want this to look um, quite painterly really. Quite painterly. You may get a little bit of slope going in there like that. Okay, so we need to put a little bit of mark like that. Let's wash the brush because I'm going to have to dry this off in a second. I'm going to have to dry this off in a second. Let's get a. It's over there. I'm going to get some of this blue. This is a lovely blue. I don't want it too thick, but I don't want it too thin. And with the medium mix, you can thin your paint a little bit more than than you can get away with sometimes. Well, I'm just going to put a little bit of paint in, just like this. Just a little bit of white. There we go. Just let the brush flow in like that. I'm going to just get a soft brush. I've got a soft brush here somewhere. I've got a, I've got a soft brush. What I want to do is just pull down just like that, just to give it a little bit of a let's get a bit more blue. I want to go slightly darker there, and then I want to go slightly lighter there. So I just mixed a little bit of white into the blue. colors mixed together just like that. Let's get a little bit of darker color now. Just in there like that. A little bit of moisture just on the brush. And today all I'm doing is just painting. I'm not I'm not painting to sell anything. I'm not painting to to, to be uh, to have a, a great work of art. I'm painting to relax. Now, my channel is all about giving tips for beginners in using acrylics. But also, the most important thing that I find with painting is the fact that we use it to de-stress, and that's the most important thing in my art is I want to use my art 
to de-stress rather than and de-stress and create really rather than painting to to have the pressures of I can make am I gonna sell this? Is anybody gonna like this? Um, that is not what that's not what I'm about. That is not what I'm about. It's just about having fun and relaxing and just seeing what you can create. I'm just going to put a little bit of reflection just in the water there. Because it is water. There you go. I'm going to put another little bit there. This is a good way to to add little bit little reflections in the water. Yeah, just a little bit of just a little bit of water painted there maybe. This gives us a just a little glow, as they say. Now I'm going to dry that off with my hair dryer and come back to that as soon as it's dry because I want, I want to knock the background back a little bit. Now. Well, I certainly sent the trias because I just checked my sound recorder and um, it had stopped working. So if there's a little bit of iffy uh, sound in the beginning of the video, I do apologise, um, but. I don't know whether it's because it's so cold in the studio. I've been having a few problems with the cameras and with um, now with the sound. But it's just one of them things you sent to try us. It's 2021. I'm not surprised. <laughs> I am not surprised. But it doesn't matter. We, we, we will paint away the stress of everyday sound device. So I've just got some mixing white. Um, this mixing white. I've got a... Um, I do actually sell this on the website. I got some there. That's what you need to purchase is the mist in white. There you go. Um, www.clayvivart.co.uk And what you do is it's a very, very um, um, semi-transparent. In fact, it's a very transparent white. Not semi-transparent. It's very transparent. And what I do is I just thin that down with some, some of my um, medium mix. And I'm just going to go straight over the top. You've seen me doing this so many times before, just to push back the trees, because I don't want them to be the main feature, and I don't want them to be too harsh. But I do want them to be visible. And I want the I want the vibrance of colour, but I don't want them to be taking over the painting. So what I use this method for a lot sometimes is to just knock things back make him look a little bit misty maybe there you are you can see it's just it just kills the color and then when i get the when i get my hair dryer on that then it'll, it'll dry that right back okay not as dry as i want it to be um i gotta be careful i haven't got much kitchen paper left so i'm grabbing a smaller um short flat and now I'm thinking about the uh, the grass area, so I'm just going to get a little bit of white into the into this lovely green that I made up, and I want to start thinking about bringing in maybe a little bit of light on this grass like this, just to lighten up just a couple of areas. I want to go mad with it. Actually, I'll tell you what we could do. We could get a bit of burnt umber. Maybe a smallest amount of black. Always got burnt umber and black on my palette because I find this a... Uh, they're wonderful um, darkening colours. I use a burnt umber just on its own sometimes without the black. What I'm going to do is put a little path in. Just scagging along. 
down there like that. Let's go on behind them bushes. Maybe, maybe get a little bit of white. A little bit of white. Don't kill it all. Give it a little bit of darkness to this path there. And we'll play with that in a second. So we've got a path in place then. And get some dark green. Bring in some dark green in. Like this. some just get your little brush same brush just a little, little bit brush like this and just put a few little bushes and things just in front just in front of that lot there and we could bring that Like that, to get a little bit of your light green then. And just slightly highlight those darker spots, get a little bit of the dark brown colour. And with the black which we made just for the path, so just get a little bit of that. You can see that I've used um, the greens together on the brush. Now I'm going into the darkest colour, so it's not going to affect the not going to affect the dark color but I'm just going to put a little bit of shadow just in there like that and I'm going to wipe my brush just in a bit of tissue paper just like that and I'll go back into the little bit of green color I'm just going to just bring down a little bit of like that. Just put a few lighter spots here and there. Not much detail because at the end of the day they're so far away you can't really see that. Again, I haven't cleaned my brush so I just want to go into slightly something slightly darker, a darker green again. And I'll bring this right down to there now like this. Because we're coming in, this is going to be a um, could be a river or a lake or something like that, and I just want to just put a bit of shadow in there, a little bit of that burned and run black again, just like that. Just to separate that off. Back in to the dark green now. paint. I'm going to put some dark green in here. Maybe a little bit of lighter green. Just up there. Like that. Let's get, let's put some trees in. You can just have fun painting and relaxing and thinking of nothing in particular but just where you want to be. You could be walking your little dog down there if you wanted to. I seen a funny thing the other day. I actually seen somebody taking a cat for a walk on a lead and I thought that was a quite a strange thing to do. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Um, if my cat would go on a lead I'd certainly be taking her out on a lead but She's not that type of cat. So these are like nice, nice green looking 
bits of foliage, bushes, who knows? Who knows what it is? Just let the brush do the work and think about your breathing as you're doing it as well. And this is, as I said, this is just about, well, you could say it's like a meditation if you wanted to, which it is sometimes. It certainly is for me anyway. It certainly is for me. I just enjoy painting so much. I find it very, very relaxing and calming. And I don't stress when I'm painting because that's not why I'm here. I'm here to, just to be relaxed and be in, the bo be in the moment and just really just let my brain try and create things. There you go. So we got a nice little landscapey type of thing going on. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to dry that again with a hairdryer. So we could do something crazy here today. We could get a little um, palette knife or you could use a, I got a scribe here somewhere. There we are. I've got one of these little um, scribes. There you are. I don't know if you can see that scribe. So I thought I'd just put a, just scribe in a few. lines like that. Basically all you're doing is just pulling a bit of paint off a canvas but you're making it look like as if there's some distant um, tree trunks and things and branches maybe. Just a little tip. It works and as long as it works it is fine. You can also use the the palette knife like that. Okay so what I thought I would do now is I'm just going to pick up any old brush, any old brush. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter in this world. Doesn't matter in my worlds. The worlds I create, it doesn't really matter. I think I'm going to put a tree in here today. Where can we put this tree? Where does it live? Let's just put this base there, maybe. Let's get a little bit more black into that. And let's just get maybe its trunk been sitting on this bank for quite a number of years. I'm going to get a little bit of moisture on my brush because I want to just put this bones of bones of this tree in place. There we go. Just have a bit of fun. Just. Maybe just make it up as we go along. We will settle him down into the ground in just one second. Now, I'm going to get myself a fan brush. There you go. Nice fan brush. And I like this. I like this purple. I like this dioxazine purple. So what I'm going to do what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some dioxazine purple and I'm just going to tap my brush just like this, have a bit of fun, just tap in the brush, pick it up some paint, make some darker spots like this and then a little bit of lighter spots like that just take a pressure off the brush and just have a bit of fun and just let the brush just do what it wants There you go. 
we could put a bit of that color just down there just like that <laughs> <laughs> and um, let's just go into a bit of white now so let's just mix that I don't want it to be too too light yet because you've guessed it maybe we'll do something like a cherry blossom tree or something like that who knows we will just let it happen I think so I know we want to put a few lighter spots in Don't kill all that dark colour. We need to leave some of that dark colour there. But then again, we need to put some more of this, a lighter colour, maybe. So we don't want to kill all the dark. Dark is our friend. There we go. Again. Just a little fleck of that colour. Just down there. I like and that. Now I'm gonna wash my brush. Little fan brush. This is a normal fan brush that I bought. And I got the scissors and I trimmed it down and played with it. I cut it, I cut it all down. Look as you can see, and I frayed it and I played with it and I cut it and um, I got it to a point where I like it. So don't be afraid not to play around with your brushes and if you can you can alter your brushes and alter your brushes at the end of the day it's all about what works for you and um and anybody says you can't do that then they don't know what they're talking about uh they might be lying to you actually because they don't want you to be as good as them so i'm gonna go on down a little bit lighter again just bring in a bit of light some spots are lighter than others but you don't want to kill the color that you put in underneath. You want to keep some of that colour there. I don't know if this is a, a cherry blossom tree or what, but all I know is I quite like this type of tree, whatever tree it is, in my imagination. You just make up trees and, and things. Again, a little bit of that. Just down there, like that. <laughs> I'm just going to dry those layers off because I don't want them to mix too much. And again, trying to save them as much kitchen roll as I can. <laughs> I'm just going to get some more white and I want to brighten this up a bit, a bit, bit of fluid. You, don't, you see I don't use a lot of water or, or whatever you want to call it basically, medium mix water, you know, I don't use a lot of, of, of that because I like to keep my paint nice and creamy and I, you notice sometimes I take a lot of paint off my brush like that as well because I don't want to overload my brush. I'm really thinking about where I'm going to put these. Bits now. Just building this. tree up because I'm gonna highlight a certain area this this side is going to be catching the light because you can see where the way I've been putting the the light on the grass well that's where my final highlights are going to be but at the moment I just want to get that full feeling on the tree maybe put a little bit of 
reflection down in there again. And we can be working on the water in a second. Now I want to go really, really light. And again, taking some paint off my brush. Checking that um, my voice recorder is working. <laughs> 2020, 2021. Hmm. Yes, it's like the twilight zone. Okay, so nice bright highlights. On what could be our cherry blossom tree. Will you decide what type of tree your tree is. Don't forget trees do not have do not have to be green. People think that every time they paint a tree it has to be green. Every time they have to every time they paint a cloud it has to be white. It's not always the case. Got grey clouds and funny white clouds and I don't know what kind type of clouds they could be it could be anything. There we are. A nice white type of tree just a little bit of flex in the water there you go now I'm hoping this will work oh I got purple paint all over my brush now I'm gonna get a little bit of white Into our burnt amber mix like that. And now I'm just gonna just put a little Bit of burnt umber. I want to get some green. Get a little bit of lighter green. I just want to get a little bit of lighter green behind the tree there. Again, let's put a little bit of highlight. Maybe. on the tree there like that I got a scrippy line of brush here okay. going into some darker color no maybe just put the odd branch in Just poking his little head out, maybe like that. We could put a another tree back there. Maybe that's just a little baby one.
I'll put a little water line. Just under there. got to get this paint to run smoothly otherwise you won't get the effect you're looking for and it doesn't always work with me neither I just want a nice type of watery effect like that I'm just sitting back and calm a little look I want to get some, maybe, on tops. Could be some flowers. I'm doing is just touching the paint with my finger to get a bit of paint on my finger and I can spread that around <laughs> like that <laughs> let's get a little bit of I want a little bit of darker colour maybe some reeds and things I want a bit darker than that. Just play around with the colours. Make sure things don't grow on them. Always tend to grow on me. There you go. <laughs> it's no, it's no great work of art, but. It's what we're here to do today. That's just painting and relaxing. Just painting and relaxing. Little bird in the background. <laughs> there you go. I don't know. You make it up, um, and I think I think I'm quite happy with a nice relaxing day that I've had today. So. Hopefully I've given you a few ideas. Hopefully that um, you can do a much better job than I can, but I'm sure of that. But hopefully that you can just play around the paint, relaxing around the stress of everyday life. And I think it's important that we just do what we can to, to relax. as I said, just take that away the stress of everyday life so thank you very much for joining me in the studio today, I hope you've enjoyed that, uh, I certainly have enjoyed myself this afternoon um, 
and um, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. So thank you very much for joining me in the studio. Uh, don't forget to click the subscribe button. Get, get, give me a thumbs up. Oh, I shall see you next time. Bye.